A new, highly anticipated vehicle has been drawing comparisons to a transformer that didn't quite finish its transition, thanks to its visage and its many blades and wings. There's a jet engine in the back, making it look like it could take off at any second. Just what kind of car is this, exactly? What is the going rate for electric vehicle repairs? What is the going rate for a jet engine? Welcome to TechZen! In this video, we will address all of your concerns and inquiries. So then, let's not waste any more time and get down to business. Last month, Ariel, the forward-thinking British automaker known for wacky automobiles like the Open Air Atom, presented the prototype Super EV Hypercar, which it claims will be for sale in 2024. The carbon fiber monster supposedly generates around 600 horsepower in two-wheel drive mode and over 1,200 horsepower in four-wheel drive mode. If Hypercar were optimized for speed, it could go from zero to 60 miles per hour in little over two seconds, which is more than four times faster than a Toyota Prius. Perhaps you can guess that the 56 kilowatt hour battery won't be able to sustain that level of power for very long in the vehicle. You're right. And this is where its most peculiar technological trick comes in. Cosworth designed and developed the compact gas-powered turbine engine that powers the future vehicle. Essentially, the motor is a scaled-down replica of what may be found on the wing of a plane. Its function is not to propel the vehicle forward, but rather to provide enough power to charge the EV's battery as the hypercar speeds off. One of the most talked about new vehicles has a visage that looks like a transformer that didn't quite finish its transformation and is accompanied by a slew of blades and wings. There's a jet engine in the back, making it look like it could take off at any second. However, it's not a plane, but rather a brand new electric automobile. The British automaker Ariel, known for its outlandish creations like the Open Air Atom, has just unveiled a prototype of its Super EV hypercar, which it claims will be for sale in 2024. The carbon fiber monster supposedly generates around 600 horsepower in two-wheel drive mode and over 1,200 horsepower in four-wheel drive mode. If hypercar were optimized for speed, it could go from zero to 60 miles per hour in little over two seconds, which is more than four times faster than a Toyota Prius. The forthcoming aerial hypercar represents yet another effort to create a car propelled by a turbine engine. Ariel, perhaps you can guess that the 56 kilowatt hour battery won't be able to sustain that level of power for very long in the vehicle. You're right, and this is where its most peculiar technological trick comes in. Cosworth designed and developed the compact gas-powered turbine engine that powers the future vehicle. Essentially, the motor is a scaled-down replica of what may be found on the wing of a plane. Its function is not to propel the vehicle forward, but rather to provide enough power to charge the EV's battery as the hypercar speeds off. This technology is making headlines because it finally succeeds in putting turbine engines in cars, but this is simply the latest chapter in the long and frustrating history of engineering. Also, Ariel isn't the only one whose propulsion is very thunderous. Elon Musk has hinted that the forthcoming Tesla Roadster could reach absurdly high speeds thanks to the use of rocket engines. To what extent the turbine is a viable option for automobiles has to be seen, and whether or not the electric vehicle era will usher in yet another series of spectacular failures. In the annals of jet-powered automobiles, propellers powered by piston-driven internal combustion engines were the norm before World War II much like in today's gasoline-powered automobiles. However, scientists and engineers soon recognized they needed a new form of propulsion that was both lighter and more potent if they were to take a flight to new heights and at faster speeds. While jet propulsion had been researched and tested, it had not yet left the laboratory. It was not until the World War II armaments race prompted the contemporary gas turbine engine that frequent long-distance transcontinental flights became commonplace, ushering in the current jet age. What if we put jet engines in cars? Okay, let's check this out. The resulting kinetic energy is then directed toward a nozzle located at the rear of the engine. With this thrust, the plane may move forward. Outward push rotates a turbine that supplies energy to the engine, including the combustor. Long-distance flights powered by jet engines were the norm by the late 1950s. Engineers in the auto industry inevitably started imagining, what if we put them in cars? The turbine engine generates almost no vibration, in contrast to a boisterous all-American V8 with its fiery pistons firing back and forth. Because it lacks the complexity of a piston-driven combustion engine, it should be more dependable and need less maintenance. 
mechanical engineer, and turbine expert Jeff Defoe from Canada's University of Windsor says, the biggest advantage would have been weight reduction. To put it simply, gas turbines had significantly higher power-to-weight ratios than piston engines, and this is why they are used in aircraft. Strange inventions like the 1950 Rover Jet 1 resulted from companies and tinkerers experimenting with turbine-powered automobiles. The Chrysler turbine, introduced in 1963, is often regarded as the most iconic example of this type of experiment because of its status as a daring but ultimately unsuccessful attempt to create the car of the future. Not all of Chrysler's test drivers were fans of the weird engine. Some said it was great, while others said it was terrible, with complaints about gas mileage, slow acceleration, and an annoying roar at high speeds. So why are cars driven by turbine engines, formerly thought to be a chimerical throwback in the era of EVs? Let's talk about how Ariel Hypercar's flashy turbine is different from the ill-fated engines of the 1960s because it can store energy in its batteries. Defoe thinks this is a good thing because the turbine engine design is more adapted to the modern requirements of this activity. Now think about the typical jobs for a car. It requires constant stopping and starting as the driver navigates between traffic lights, stop signs, and other vehicles. In that it can run at varying RPMs, a conventional internal combustion engine is up to the challenge. Speculating on the future, the turbine is just one option for adding onboard fuel to an electric car. For instance, the Chevrolet Volt, manufactured and marketed by GM from 2011 to 2019, did not use its little gasoline engine to move the vehicle forward, but rather to power an electrical generator that supplied energy to the car's electric motors. Mazda has hinted at using its signature Wankel rotary engine, which once propelled compact cars like the RX-7, as a range extender in an upcoming electric vehicle. Edison Motors' hybrid semi-truck design utilizes the same concept. Engineers redesigned an 18-wheeler by swapping out its massive diesel engine with a smaller diesel generator that charges a battery that powers the truck's electric motors. The turbine engine, according to Defoe, is a decent range extender. Turbine efficiency drops slightly when scaled down from the massive beast on an airplane to the size of the hypercar, due to increased friction caused by the engine's fluids. However, he maintains that it would be just as effective as a high-end piston-driven engine while being far more portable. Since electric vehicles, burdened by large batteries, typically struggle with their weight, this may be an important factor to take into account. Let's talk about how in the future hydrogen fuel could power automobiles. It is not necessary to use fossil fuels to power a turbine. After all, the promise of reduced carbon emissions is a major selling point for electric automobiles. Even if electric vehicles EVs, are capable of operating on renewable energy, having a small gasoline power plant on board to increase the vehicle's range is not environmentally friendly. The turbine is flexible, so it can be used with other fuels besides the gas it normally uses. The classic Chrysler turbine from the 1960s was rumored to be modified to run on Channel No. 5 perfume in France and tequila in Mexico. Defoe claims that the engine's combustor design can be altered quite quickly so that it burns a new fuel while the rest of the engine remains unchanged. He also suggests that hydrogen fuel could be used in turbines of the future, which would be good for the engine. Exhaust from a gas turbine gradually eats away at engine parts due to the acidity of carbon dioxide. He explains the benefits of the engine by saying, if you burn hydrogen and you basically simply have air combined with water vapor as your gas at the back half of the engine. And it's not just Ariel and Tesla that are adding turbines to automobiles. Videos of daredevils who have attached jet engines to the back of their BMWs and Teslas can be found with a simple search on YouTube. However, you shouldn't try this at home. Is it likely that this car will be useful to us? We want to hear from you. So please share your thoughts in the space provided below. And on that note, I must adjourn. Please subscribe to our channel to see more incredible reviews. And we genuinely hope you enjoyed the video.